Hello everybody, Raven Knight here, and welcome to a very special episode of For Honor Executions Graded. This is a series where I take a look at all of the For Honor heroes and their unique executions, and give them all a grade based on four criteria. Lethality, realism, efficiency, and cool factor. After grading all their executions, I add them all together to give us an average score so that we know just how good this hero's executions really are overall. I've really enjoyed doing the series, guys. It has its ups and downs. I've had some fans really enjoying the series and some haters really hating me and my takes, but you know what? It's been a great piece of fun ever since I started it. But as the game has evolved and grown, so too have the number of executions for each hero. And each time each hero gets a new execution, I take the time to grade that new execution, add it to the grade, and get us a new average each and every time. So that, that way we know whether the hero is getting better or worse in their grade average. I mean, I guess it's the teacher in me. But I've had a lot of people, as a result, want to ask, Hey Raven, what is the current grade? Where are we currently at with the For Honor heroes? What is the current grade for each hero? So I decided that I'd make a video so that you guys can kind of see where we currently stand. I'll also release in a post later what the numbers are so that you guys have something to fall back on without having to watch the full video just to get all the numbers. So, without any further ado, this is the For Honor Executions Graded Report Card, where I will go through each hero, tell you how many executions they currently have, what their current average is, and if I have any notes about their performances or what I think about them overall in terms of their executions and why I think they may have them. I'll try to keep this video as quick as I possibly can while still giving each each hero their due diligence okay let's get started warden warden currently has 19 executions and has an 82 percent overall average not a lot to say about warden i think that he comes in with a really awesome weapon and the armor that he uses actually makes him really good in terms of defense and offense i think the fact that he can use his armor as an offensive tool itself helps him in a lot i think that he could be doing a little bit better in certain areas but overall i think he's performing just fine Peacekeeper. Peacekeeper has 19 executions and an 82% overall just like Warden. I think in the same way, Peacekeeper comes in with a great amount of style and flair, which helps her out in cool factor. But I think that one of the problems we have here is I think that she is limited by having a series of weapons that up against more armored opponents would not perform as well. But I think overall, she brings a lot to the table as well. Definitely gets a lot of style points. Conqueror. Conqueror has a total of 18 executions with a 74% overall. I think the biggest problem Conqueror has is the flail, while a lethal weapon is unruly and dangerous, and so it suffers sometimes in terms of efficiency and also realism. I notice that Conqueror sometimes has head decapitations that he probably shouldn't, so that does hurt him a little bit. Overall, though, Conqueror could stand to do a bit better. Lawbringer. Lawbringer has 18 executions overall and a 79%. This is a little disappointing because I know Lawbringer can do better than this. He has one of the best weapons and armor sets in the game. I really do think he could be doing better, but there are some executions, particularly one that I will not bring up here, that really, really hurt him because I feel like the developers wanted him to be a bit more goofy in some executions rather than deadly, and that just hurts him a great deal. He could be doing far better. Centurion. Centurion has 18 executions total and a 79% just like Lawbringer. Centurion's handling himself pretty well. He does run into a little bit of a problem by having to just use a Gladius without his shield to uh, go along with it, but he makes up for it with a lot of good punching action, which does give some style points. And let's face it, the authority that Centurion shows off is pretty solid. Gladiator. Gladiator has 16 executions total with a 74% overall. Gladiator does get a whole lot of style points because he's showing off some cool and really awesome design and style in terms of what he does. The problem is the Trident is not the most deadly of weapons and Gladiators themselves weren't always trying to kill in the arena, so it does hurt him a little bit here. Plus, he does tend to showboat, which means that he does lose some efficiency points quite a lot. He could, he could stand to be a little bit quicker with what he does. Black Pryor. Black Pryor has 11 executions total and an 81% overall. Black Pryor is doing exceptionally well overall. I think that the majority of Black Pryor's executions have been really cool. Only one has really failed to get my approval. So, so far, Black Pryor seems to be performing exceptionally well with just 11 executions. Warmonger. Warmonger, out of seven executions, has a 79%. Warmonger handles herself very, very well, has a lot of good style points, a lot of brutality and lethality points. Warmonger seems to do a great deal of damage in a very short amount of time, which I can definitely appreciate. There are one or two moments where she takes a little too long with what she does, but overall, she is not lacking in terms of lethality. 
Griffin. Griffin has six executions and a 79%. So he's keeping up pretty well, even with Warmonger. The thing about Griffin that I love is the Bardiche is such a cool tool, and it comes off really awesome. We get to see a lot of Griffin's style and also his experience in his execution, so I think he's doing pretty stinking well. I think he could be doing a little better in some areas, particularly in how he approaches his executions, but overall I think he's doing fine. Raider. Raider has 18 executions and a 71% overall. Not a lot to say about Raider. One of the problems that we have with Raider is that I feel like there are moments where he doesn't use his axe in the way he should. I think the problem that we have here is the axe is a limited weapon. It is not as versatile as some other weapons we've seen, and quite often the way you kill with it is going to be the same each and every time. And because of this, the developers have to come up with creative ways to use it, and sometimes those creative ways don't come off as realistic. Berserker. Berserker has 18 executions and a 76% overall, a little better than Raider, and I think it rerun into a similar problem. Because you can only do so much with a pair of axes, the developers try to be a little bit more creative in some areas, and it hurts them, like sticking a bomb to the axe, for example. Sometimes their attempts to be creative do hurt them in the end. Warlord. Warlord has 19 executions with a 75% overall. Warlord does pretty well overall. His combination of defense and offense is pretty awesome. One of the problems he does have, though, is he likes to dip into wrestling maneuvers, and that can hurt him in the long run. His most recent execution, for example, was very much savage, but it didn't fit Warlord at all. In fact, I thought it was more of a shaman execution than a Warlord execution. And because of that, I feel like his identity is coming in doubt. I hope he comes out of that slump. Valkyrie. Valkyrie has 18 executions and an 80% overall. Valkyrie's actually doing a little better than average. I'm a little impressed with how Valkyrie has done. The spear and shield is an excellent combo. The only problem I think I see is that sometimes I feel like Valkyrie is trying to do too much sweeping action when she could be going for thrusting action because thrusting is primarily what you want to do with a spear anyway. Overall, though, she's definitely doing all right. I also think that another problem I have is sometimes she takes too long with a few executions. I think she needs to be a little bit quicker and move on a little bit faster. Highlander. Highlander has 17 executions and an 81% overall. The biggest problem I see with Highlander right now is not his lethality. His lethality is usually pretty good. It's in his cool factor. I feel like a lot of Highlander executions just do not impress all that much. So his cool factor is what's really holding him back. If he could just get some style points in there, I think he'd do a whole lot better. Shaman. With 15 executions, Shaman currently has a 73%. Shaman is wild, savage, and vicious, everything that I like to see. The problem is sometimes I think that that savage viciousness does not translate well into either realism, efficiency, or cool. Sometimes it is cool to see how vicious she can be, but then other times it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. There was one execution in particular that I'm remembering where all she did was she slammed a dude's head into the ground over and over and over again. Definitely a feral and vicious thing to do, but not necessarily lethal, not necessarily necessarily cool and not necessarily efficient so it does tend to help make her suffer a little bit but not in the worst way jormungandr jormungandr has eight executions and currently has a 69 percent i am contractually obligated to say here giggity the problem that jormungandr has is the usefulness of her hammer weapon the hammer is a really interesting weapon to bring to this game but it is not always a practical weapon and there are times that while it may be lethal it does tend to add more effort to her swing than is actually necessary and there are also moments where i don't always see the efficiency coming out in the hammer execution or the realism Varingian Guard. Varingian Guard is the newest character and as such only has four executions, but with those four, she currently has a 96%, almost a perfect score. I gotta give props to Varingian Guard where it's due. Varingian came in with four kick-ass executions and she is definitely making the most of them. I absolutely love her executions. If she keeps this up, she could be one of the top tier executioners. Kensei. Kensei has 18 executions and currently has a 79%. Not a whole lot to say about Kensei. Kensei is pretty good so far. I think that a lot of what they do is very well done. I think sometimes she takes a little too long with executions when she could go a little faster. But overall, still pretty awesome. Orochi. Orochi has 18 executions with a 73%. I think that the problem that Orochi faces right now is sometimes a little bit of showboating. I remember a few executions where he takes definitely way too long to finish what is needed. And then there are also moments where I feel like he made decisions in their executions that just were really bad. For example, one where they tried to choke out a person with a katana rather than cut with it. Very poor decision, and it definitely hurt the grade. 
Shugoki. With an 18 num- with with a number of executions numbering at 18, Shugoki has a 73%. This is a surprise to me. I feel like Shugoki could be doing a whole lot better than this, but at the same time, you have a giant club, and what really makes Shugoki memorable is his weight. So sometimes the Ferrano developers like to give him executions that go into his weight rather than his weapon, and I think that hurts at the end of the day because being fat does not necessarily make you deadly. Sh- sure, it's a meme, and it's funny, and that does add in a cool factor, but sometimes it hurts in terms of efficiency and realism, particularly in ones where he's using his hands to crush a person's skull. That will hurt in the long run. Nobushi. With 19 executions, Nobushi currently has a score of 84%. I contribute a lot of this to the fact that Nobushi has a very fast, versatile, and efficient weapon for use. I do think that she can take a little bit too long in some executions, and I also think that there are moments where her precision with her strikes isn't always where it should be, but overall she's doing an exceptional job. Shinobi. With 17 executions, Shinobi currently has a 71%, and I attribute this to the fact that Shinobi's weapons are not optimal. The Gusari Gama that he carries do not always get the kill that are necessary, and when they do get the kill, quite often the developers had to make it unrealistic to get it. This hurts Shinobi in the long run. Automusha. With 16 executions, Aramusha currently has a 77%. Aramusha is actually doing pretty well. I actually don't have a whole lot to say about Aramusha. I don't like the fact that he wears that hat. He should probably take that off in class. And I also think that while wielding uh, two swords, this can make them a little unruly. But overall, I don't think Aramusha is doing too bad a job. He just needs to keep going up. Hitakiri. With 9 executions, Hitsukiri has an 88%. One of the best executioners in the game overall. An absolutely stellar grade. I have nothing much to say about executions from Hitsukiri. She's just she's just really owning it out there. Kyoshin. With 6 executions, Kyoshin has a score of 74%. The problem with Kyoshin is that he's dipping a little bit too much into anime. He's a little bit—he's kind of the weeb of the class, and that shows in some of his executions. He could do a lot better if he just sped things up. There's also that one execution where he tried to go a little too much for style and ended up looking like an idiot. He—he he really needs to hone it in. Tiandi, with 11 executions, Tiandi has an 81 percent. Not bad. Tiandi's actually doing pretty well overall. I think Tiandi does have a tendency to drop his uh, sword a little too often or give up his sword too often, which hurts him in terms of efficiency. So I don't like that. He's a bit of a show-off, but overall, Tiandi otherwise is doing very well. Nusia. Nusia has 11 executions and currently has an 83%. A very good grade overall. She's making the most out of her hook swords. I do think that she takes a little too long in some executions. Uh, like Bai Mao Nu, which she went a little too long with, but otherwise she's doing very well, taking full advantage of those versatile weapons. Zhang Jun. Zhang Jun currently has 11 executions with 83% overall grade. Not bad for the old timer. He's doing pretty well. I actually like the weapon he's using. He seems to have a lot of style points going on, but again, he can sometimes take too long and can get a little cocky, which hurts him. Shaolin. Shaolin has 12 executions and has a 73% overall. This isn't entirely Shaolin's fault. Shaolin is doing the best with what he has, but unfortunately Shaolin's weapon just doesn't make him very lethal. The bow staff is not a lethal weapon by nature, and because that's what he's restricted to, quite often he may get some really cool moves, but not always lethal ones. San Hu. Sean Hu has 8 executions and has an 87%. This is phenomenal. It's right up there with Hitakiri in terms of doing an exceptional job with executions. Only one really seemed to hurt him, and that was out of realism because, well, they summoned a dragon out of nowhere. How did you even? Pirate. Pirate has 5 executions and currently has a 70%. The real thing that Pirate is struggling with here is the realism of that pistol of hers. The pistol does not work the way Pirate, the way it acts for Pirate most of the time. It would not behave like that in real life, and because of that, Pirate struggles a little bit. Medjai. Medjai has five executions and currently has an 82%. The weapon Medjai uses isn't the best weapon in the world, and I definitely see it having flaws, but for it being flawed, Medjai does a pretty decent job in this execution's graded. I want to see him keep getting better. Afira. Afira has five executions and has a 78%. 
The problem I'm starting to see with the Fiera is way too much flash and flare and not enough lethality. Like in the most recent one, that bounce off with the shield. While it is flashy and flary and cool, it's not definite. It's not assuredly lethal, which I think hurts. And Ocelotl. Ocelotl has not gotten any new executions, so Ocelotl currently has four executions, and out of those, has an 80%. Not a lot to say about Ocelotl without seeing more of his stuff being brought in. I think one execution he had took a little too long to instigate, but he definitely comes into this with some style points, so I'll give him some for there for that. There was another execution that I think was very unrealistic, but overall, Ocelotl has the potential to do better. His weapons are kind of a wild card to me. They could be really, really awesome, but they could also really, really sink him. I'm hoping we see some improvement. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the current For Honor report card as of the beginning of year eight of For Honor. Once we get into the next year, I may do another report card and let you know how things have changed. But for now, that is where we stand. I hope you guys found this educational. I will, of course, make a post later sharing all the numbers with you guys so that you know what to expect. What do you guys think? Are you pleased with where your characters are? Are there any that are lower or higher than you think they deserve to be? Please be respectful in your comments, guys. And I always love reading the comments from you guys. I've been enjoying doing this series for a while and you guys are the reason i continue doing it thank you so much and as always i will see you in my next video take care